Hey everybody, Erin here. So it's raining, obviously. I've been griping all summer about how we just haven't had much rain. And of course, you can't choose when your rain comes or what quantity it comes in. And so today we have flood warnings. It's fine, it'll all be fine. But I did wanna let you know that yesterday, before it rained, I filmed a tour of the next spot in the garden, which is the area right behind me. Now I often refer to this area as the backyard. It's really the side yard, but I've been working a lot on this area this year. I'm sort of refining this area. It was kind of an oval shape. I made it into a circle. Um, you'll see all that in the video, but I just want to give you a little intro here. And then uh, we're going to cross our fingers that no plants are flopping today. All right, enjoy the tour, you guys. Remember, this is part of a series of, tour of tours that I'm doing uh, in the garden where I'm sort of going through each section of the garden in a little bit more detail than I have in the past so you can get a better idea of what's happening in each specific area. So we did the patio garden was the first video and now we're moving back here to the side yard. I have terrible names for my gardens. You get the idea. Enjoy the tour. So we'll start here right at the patio again just like we did in the last tour. And uh, I think you see right away, there's a really lovely Salvia Argentia here. This one is particularly good looking. They don't often, you'll see more, and they don't always look that great. The grass you see here is Cecilaria autumnalis. And this is when it looks its best, when it's just starting to do its flowering. The rest of the time, it just kind of looks like a grass. Uh, over here, we have some Kufia. I'll see if I can find the name. This was a sample plant that was sent to me and it's a really interesting flower on it. It's been blooming really, really well. I don't find that it's as attractive to the hummingbirds as the more tubular shaped ones, but still quite nice. Uh, this is my little Miss Figgy Fig that has moved over here. Uh, the chartreuse foliage that you see throughout here is Jewels of Opar. And I'm hoping you can kind of see the flowers which look like tiny little pink and red peppercorns, sort of. I did tuck some more of that Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow in here. Um, some people asked me last time if that was hardy for me, and it is very unreliable. So I grow it as an annual. If it comes back, that's great, but I don't anticipate it will. More Jules Opar here. And these are some uh, pink and purple Nicotiana. These are self-sowers. This would be from uh, the Perfume series. So this would be Perfume Hot Pink and Perfume Purple that reseeded from last year. Some more Salvia Argentia along here. Uh, in here, these clematis that you see here, this is all Stand By Me clematis. Um, I don't have a great deal of luck with it reblooming, although I'm always hesitant to cut back because I do think the seed heads are so pretty. This beauty right here is the one that I planted last year that is climbing up. Um, and again, I'll have to put a name on the screen for you. Um, but I planted that in a video last fall and it's climbing, sort of, sort of climbing up the uh, dogwood here. The dogwood, which doesn't look like a lot right now, because of course it's out of flower, but this is Rosie Teacup's dogwood, put on an absolutely amazing show here. You know, I think it maybe is questionably in a little too much sun, but I tell you what, it doesn't suffer much for it. So it's managing it. I believe the purple sedum here is purple emperor. I don't know for a fact. And I have divided this plant several times. That's the beauty of sedum, is that it's the easiest plant in the world to divide and propagate. And it stands up really nicely here. Looks very good here with the blue globe spruce as well. Those blue globe spruces are uh, limbed up from the bottom. And I've had to start, um, what happens with these is they don't stay a globe forever and they start trying to develop a leader. And I have cut out the leader this year on this one and another one. And it looks a little funky for a little bit, but you know what, it's, I mean, you can still kind of see it's trying to put up a leader there, um, but it's doing okay. And I, I don't really want to lose these because I think they're really nice structure here. Um, so this is uh, Helen von Stein. Um, uh, stackies. 
So this is a lamb's ear, or maybe this is big ear. This is probably big ear lamb's ear. And so this is the plant that a lot of people suggest, rightfully so, as a perennial alternative to salvia argentia right here. But I think when you look at the two of them, I like it a lot, but I think when you look at the two of them, you can see why I still grow the salvia argentia, even though it is biennial and not perennial. I have also put in some dichondra silver falls in here as a ground cover. I did that last year too. I quite like the look. I especially like it with the uh, ajuga that's in there. This is some of the new magic wands, Veronica, here. I have not cut it back because it's still, you know, blooming at the top. So this is always the question of like, when do you cut these back? And I'm going to let those go for now because um, they do still have a little bit of color on them. In here is a very diminutive clematis, which uh, has already bloomed. So it's just this tiny little clump right there. I don't even really need that ring. Before we get into the circle, we'll just keep making our way down the path here. So um, we've got some more Veronica, etc. over here. This is um, Ringo Rose. The roses have had a terrible year. The Japanese beetles have actually gotten really bad in recent weeks, and I haven't been able to keep up with them, so they've been taking a beating. This is magic. This is White Wands. Veronica, which is on its second bloom. I've already cut it back once just about, I mean, 10 days ago maybe, and we're starting to get a rebloom on it. I also have some ironweed in here, and this hosta grows pretty much in full sun. This is uh, Earth Angel. Manages it okay. Uh, we'll finish up this side. This uh, purple, I think this is just dark, dark reader. Um, dark writer, dark reader, geranium. It see it sees itself all over the place, which is fine. And this is uh, what's left of the verbascum. I believe this is uh, white want. No, I'll put that one on the screen. I can't remember the name of anything today. Anyway, I've been cutting them off as they look terrible, but there still is a little bit of bloom on these. On the other side of the path here, one lone poppy still standing there. Uh, some all gold Hacklenchloa, which looks, of course, fabulous with the blue, uh, blue globe spruce there. This is where I grow a lot of very small. Here's another one of those self-sown uh, geraniums. This is where I grow a lot of small hostas. So this is like all the mouse ear collection. These two are both from that mouse ear collection, and as is this last one. I don't know what that middle one is from. And this is a miniature Solomon seal in here. This area grew, I had a lot of heucheras in here last year. It was filled with heucheras. Most of them died. Um, I am, you know, like a lot of people, you know, jaded by, by heucheras. This is a sedum whose name I don't know that is obviously split open, which they will do sometimes. And this is a different purple sedum with bigger leaves um, and like a pinker flower. And I do have flopping issues with this one, but I, I still like it. But I think the other one I showed you is superior to that. And then this is the Moonrise Japanese Maple. Last year, um, a big branch died out of it and I cut it out and I was a little worried. And it certainly looks just fine. In fact, I probably should go in there and thin it out a little, but I have not done that. Uh, this should get, I think this is about 10 feet tall when it's fully grown. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. It's really a beautiful tree. So we'll keep walking towards the garage, just so you don't lose track of where we're at. And we'll just quickly talk, take a two peek at the two containers that are down here. So this is where I planted the fat shadera, which is my preferred pronunciation of that because it's more fun to say. And it is doing really well, as you can tell. Uh, such a bright accent. I will definitely bring that in to grow that as a houseplant. It is not hardy here. And then the rest of this container is looking pretty good. I have pruned on the helichrysum quite a bit. Um, for a while it looked terrible because helichrysum is one of the host plants for the American painted butterfly. And so the larvae go on there and destroy it. 
it bounces back. Those butterflies hatch and they, so I don't touch it anymore. The butterflies hatch, it grows back. I prune off the bad looking stuff and it's all good to go. And this um, salmon begonia is just probably just my favorite. I believe this is an Iconia salmon begonia. And the, the brake fern is not exactly performing really well, but there it is in there. I'm hoping, I will probably try to bring those in too. Um, and I have been cutting back on the sweet potato vine a fair amount, but I do like when the helichrysum and the sweet potato vine sort of intermingle. And then we have another, uh, this planter really needs some height and it's not going to get it. But uh, this is this pistachio trascantia that I think is pretty new on the market. And I saw, and everyone seemed to have it this year, just doing a little d taking off of those bad blooms there. I obviously did not need to put three of them in this pot, um, but it is quite a pretty plant. And I put a break fern in here too, and here's that break fern. So that one's doing actually doing a little bit better. Um, I had two begonias in here and one of them died out. I think it got too much water. So um, it's mostly left to tra as Trascantia right now. I don't hate it, to be honest. So this part of the garden, um, I think I showed you earlier this year, I changed this big time to create a circle in the center here. It had been an oval. Now, because there's this big, it's not flat grass, there's this big crest in the ground, which is of course the roots from this enormous Norway spruce here. Um, we will never have flat grass here so long as that tree is around. Uh, so it's a little hard to see the circle, but we did a lot of changing up these planting beds because I made that into a circle. And actually this spot I think is looking really good right now. So first of all, along here, I always plant something a little different along this edge here. Um, that, that edge takes a real beating in winter. It gets really wet there. So I only plant annuals right on that edge. So I just planted zinnias this year and I'm so happy I'm having a good zinnia year. Um, I think some of these, like I think this is, I bought some zinnia seeds from Dawn Creek Breed Zinnias and they have kind of a breeding program where you can buy a packet of seeds for like 50 bucks. It's really meant to support their program, um, but that was one of those. Um, those are really pretty. Some of these might be like queenie lime something. I don't know. I planted a whole bunch of different zinnias in here, but the zinnias I think look great. And right now, um, this is actually either birthday or neon sedum. It has not turned pink yet, which is great because I think it looks so much better before it turns pink. And behind that is an aster. Asters do take over a little bit, so you can see it's one plant that has sort of spread through this area. I just pull it out where I don't want it. And then I took a whole bunch of annuals here. Um, so this is um, superbenas and salvias. And uh, I think there's even a lavender here in the front and planted this all with blues. I put all the blues in one spot and then I did pop some more zinnias in there as well. I also put in some tiny quick fires. There are three here. They're hard to spot, but this one is currently in flower. So this is a uh, new hydrangea this year. It is super teeny tiny and I kind of love it because I don't even think of it as a shrub. I think of it as a perennial. This is another one right here. <laughs> the third one is currently being buried underneath there uh, by zinnias and other things and I don't feel like digging it out because I kind of liking how this looks. Climbing hydrangea there. You guys have seen that before. More all gold some hostas that I don't know what they are. It's just tucked a begonia in there. Um, I, this is all um, cat's pajamas nepeta in here. Uh, you know, it's looking a little, looking a little tired. I should probably cut that back again. I think it's bloomed twice already. Some sun patients in here just to fill in some holes. This is, I believe this is breakout. Um, Dahlia. The dahlias are kind of having a rough year. You guys are having a tough time with, speak of the devil, Japanese beetles and tarnish bugs. It's just, it's been a rough, rough year for that. Uh, the clematis that's blooming here is kind of at the end of its bloom is Sweet Summer Love. Just kind of fills up that trellis. And we have a couple of little lime hydrangeas behind it. I've never really been a big fan of little lime, to be honest, you guys but um, they do look pretty nice in this stage. I've tucked some more dahlias inside of here. This is uh, 
blue kazoo, spirea, which got cut back by probably two thirds after it flowered and it's already filling in this area again. It was easily five feet wide, maybe six feet wide when I cut it back. Um, popping up throughout here at, is Angelica gigas, but the first one to bloom is right here. And this is, I've done a video on this plant before. I'll put a link to that or I've included it in a video before. It's such a cool plant. It's a biennial. It is an absolute pollinator magnet. It, it uh, mostly attracts these white and uh, these wasps, white and black wasps, which are non-aggressive wasps, uh, really good pollinators, but you can see there's more growing back here. Um, this, and oh, and here we have um, Rosa Glauca which again, all the roses are looking tough, but check out the rose hips on this guy. So good. Oh, Joe Pieweed growing back here. That is whatever, it's taller than the roof. So whatever height that is back there, such a good plant, but a really nice echo between that and the Angelica gigas and the purple here of this. And here, I'll just take you back here quickly. So you can see that um, pink mink clematis is currently blooming back here or finishing up its bloom, I should say. And that blooms on one of the horn beams. I just kind of prop that up one of the, on one of the horn beams. There's some more Angelica popping up through there. This is uh, here. You can get kind of an idea of what the leaves look like on this plant. Uh, it's the purple one is the gigas one. So that's um, it's quite pretty. A couple of these things that you see in here, there's some more sun patients. There's a begonia. Some of these things are things I just tucked in because we're going to be having tours. This is a viburnum that really could use a little bit of pruning, but um, it's in good shape and healthy. This is um, one of the oak leaf hydrangeas I planted in a video several years ago about which size we should plant. And let me see if I can show you both in the same shot. That's, that's the one that came in the smaller bucket. And this is the one that came in the bigger bucket. And I don't think it's that the other one didn't catch up. I think it's that the smaller one, they both sustained deer damage and the smaller one was slower to bounce back from that. So this beautiful evergreen here is um, Picea Hudsonii. It is a white spruce, white pine. And uh, we planted this one for um, our dog Hudson, actually. Um, and it has gotten so tall, but it's really skinny. It does have kind of a hole on the side of it. It always has. It doesn't bother me. I, I think it's just a nice little view into what's happening behind it. I've got um, another fig here. This is my Chicago hardy fig. I didn't know where else to put it, so I just stuck it back here. One of these is Firelight and one of these is Quickfire. I think this is Quickfire and I think this is Firelight, but I couldn't be sure. And then, you know, I should always, every year I say I'm going to move these Tilt-A-Whirl Hostas because they just get fried right here. But do I ever do that? No. So right now they're still here. And these are all Autumn Joy Sedums um, that I moved over here eight eons ago. So as you come around here, this planting bed is new here because this was part of making the circle. And so there's not a lot happening in it right now. I put some ajuga in there, some pulmonaria, obviously very dry here underneath this dry and shady. So it's a tough spot to grow things. I'm trying some foxgloves in there. And then I popped in some begonias and trascantia to fill it in for this year. And then, of course, geranium macrorhizum, which I expect will actually grow extremely well here because, as you know, I rave about this plant all the time because it just grows where you put it nicely. So coming around the horn here, here we are at the banana, which is finally starting to get some real height to it. It has grown quite a bit just in the past couple of weeks. I would say it was bigger last year at this time though. I, one little note is that you'll notice how all the leaves have this funky little cut right here. I believe I cut, you know, three inches too deep when I cut the top of this off. 
because every single leaf has this cut. So I think I cut into the top of every developing leaf. So that's what I did wrong, but it's looking great. I've got underneath here, we've got a bunch of dahlias growing and um, these are quite pretty, these little collarettes and a variety of other things. It's very tropical. I've got a canna over there. I've got some lantana. Um, you know, it's a little bit mishmashy, but it's sort of a little tropical corner over here. Uh, over here is the Haas halo. This is where I, this is where I planted the first Haas halos this year. When you guys saw me plant more Haas halo hydrangeas, the Incredibles had been here and I took them out and moved them into the new sort of privacy screen with the neighbors. And this is where Haas halos are. There's another one over there that we'll look at in a second. So I want to back up so I can show you this, this side of the bed. So there is this terraced wall here that I built myself and I will never build a wall again, probably, I don't know, 11 years ago now. And there's a lot going on up there and there was a lot going on in front of it. So this year I ripped out everything in front of it for the most part. And I replanted with ladies mantle starting primarily from plugs. So these are all from plugs planted not too long ago. Now I had hoped they would fill in a little bit more by now, but it's a tough year for growing here and they haven't. So that's how that is. And then throughout here, I've dotted in cat's meow nepeta. So there's five of them throughout here. So my vision for this area is basically, at least from here, we might continue it from here all the way over is going to be just ladies mantle with nepeta coming up with a few things. Now I do have some sanguisorba popping up there. This one is probably too tall for this spot. So maybe I'll swap out a different sanguisorba. There is this princess, crown princess marguerite rose just being absolutely decimated by Japanese beetles in here. But my idea here is to keep this much simpler this year. Oh, and we do have such a pretty, pretty well, first of all, some beautiful sweet peas here, but also a really pretty clematis here name going on the screen. Cause I, this one I forget every single year, but really pretty pink non vining clematis that just tips it's planted up here and it just tips over the wall up here. By the way, this is all millennium allium. If you grow this plant, you know, it is an absolute pollinator magnet. It is an exquisite plant. Absolutely excellent plant. I like all these. Um, I like all of these, uh, summer blooming alliums, uh, millennium is, I'm not gonna say it's my favorite for sure, but it's up there. I do like windy city quite a bit too. We'll see that in another tour. Uh, this grass is a hackamacloa that I've never seen again. And I believe it's called stripe it rich. I have two of them left. There were three. I have two of them left. It is hardy here. It's uh, a kind of a better stripe than uh, Oriola and it grows pretty well here. Um, but I have never seen it anywhere else ever again. The, in the center here is, um, a willow. This is a grafted willow. It's just purpurea, whatever the weeping purpurea one is. Um, it really has bug problems. Every year I get, um, some sort of caterpillar comes and gets it and I have to get in there with a Captain Jack's dead bug or BT and go after them and it really gets skeletonized and not that attractive. I also have to prune on it quite a bit to keep it from taking over the whole area. I have tried so many different trees in this spot. I have yet to find one that I feel is better than this, but I wouldn't say I, I'm thrilled with it. And those are three limelight hydrangeas there. I prune those uh, level with the deck and they pretty much go up to the level of the deck railing every year. It's my favorite stage of those right now. So just to finish up as we go around here, um, I, then I transition to some dazzleberry sedum. These are all newly planted this year too, and not looking particularly fabulous, but I think in the future, this will look really quite pretty. Uh, another uh, verbascum there. And there's some cone flowers in here. Every year I rip out the Rudbeckia and every year there's still Rudbeckia there. So I guess at some point it can just, just live there. And this is more in the last tour video. 
I talked to you about this. This is Verbena Bampton, and this is all self-sown. It's quite tall in this area. I left it there because there's not a lot happening in this area this year. I wouldn't say this part of the garden is particularly spectacular this year, but you know, it's a growth year. Let's call it a, a growing year for that. So I do want to take you around the corner here to show you this. Now this whole finger coming out is new as well. This bed used to only go out as far as the steps. And uh, so I created this because I wanted to create a better entrance from these stairs into the circle part here. So I just plopped this together actually in about three hours one day. Uh, transplanted all these teaspoon hostas, which could use a little water, uh, over here, and they're doing good there. Then we've got some beacons and patients, which are doing fabulous. And then I put some Hacklechloe all gold over here, just to brighten this area up. A little pot of begonias, which is just sitting on a little stone, but I wanted, you know, I just wanted a little brightness of color. Uh, in the middle here and those have been doing absolutely fabulous another Haas halo hydrangea this is all um, uh, so this is all lamium growing in here I think it's the pink champagne one maybe or ghost one of those two little bit of European ginger in here and then this is a Solomon seal that I got uh, from a sale at a private garden and it's quite pretty. I don't know. I don't know what the name of it was, and she didn't either. But it's got really nice stripes on it. So it never, it never does any, never multiplies in any way. Neither does this little autumn fern that I have in here. The big hosta is blue angel, and the other big hosta over here is stained glass perhaps. But I want to back up because this garden looks best when viewed from farther back here. And that shows you the silver umbrella Aurelia. Now this Aurelia is very hard to find. I always feel a little bit bad showing it. Very hard to find and I've been told it's difficult to grow which was news to me because it's not been difficult for me to grow on this north side of the deck. It's a grafted variegated um, Aurelia. You can see the pretty variegation on it and it's just starting to bloom. It's a huge pollinator magnet uh, and it has these woody stems, three big, I mean it's basically a tree. Planted this in 2016 and uh, it has certainly exceeded my expectations. I wanted something you would see from the deck and I certainly, certainly got that with this. So here's the view as you sort of come in from the other side of the garden. You always get that little peek through to the patio bed that we talked about in the last video. And then I'll just quickly show you the hornbeam hedge, which a lot of people ask about all the time. Um, so the hornbeam hedge is made up of six original hornbeams that I planted in this hedge, which are these. And those were all a variety called Lucas. And then I couldn't get Lucas anymore, so then we switched to Fistigigata for the rest of them. And those were all planted is it last year? Last year now. So the rest of this hedge is planted last year. So hopefully they will grow happily and quickly and eventually fill in to become a wall, but there's quite a bit of space between them now. Um, yeah, I pruned fairly hard on these last year um, just to kind of get them a little thicker. I was not happy with how thick they were, but they're holding up really well. And uh, it's, I think gonna be very pretty in time. Okay, so that is the side yard, heavily renovated this year. Quite happy with the banana anchoring this corner with the Aurelia behind it. I think that's kind of a nice little combo. Pretty happy with how things are growing. Of course, it would be better if we had rain, but you can't pick your weather.
to find out There might be something I forgot But all I know is that I miss you a lot A lot Seven days of eternity Seven days in another country Every cell screams stay right here And my legs they freeze us in fear 